Yeah, they used to always say Alex bag of line, pound for pound, was the best on the planet. And I think uh, Coping Chung may have taken that title away. Just look, at that's what's so great about our sport, all different forms and fashions, shapes and sizes. If you look at these two next to each other when they were lagging the ball. Decent break, wasn't his best. He's going to get a little bit of a look at the two. Yeah, Ko Ping Chung is on three wins out of six. He started off very good, and just yesterday, I mean, I wouldn't say he had a nightmare. He lost 5-4 to Joshua Filler. He lost 5-4 to Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. But he did beat Bernie Regalario, so this just shows you that this is the way this league is going to go. These players are going to beat each other. This is why it's a tight format this year because of the the strength in depth. Mm, difficult safety here. I don't think he really has a pocket besides the lower left, and that would be a very kind of. Low percentage shot to say. Could just kind of drag the cue ball off the two and lay it on the rail behind the pink four. It's going to leave it easy jump and return. Now he's looking at floating off the, his right side of the two. I don't think anything lays great here. Taking his extension on the first shot. I personally kind of like going off the left side of the two and dragging the cue ball to the rail just lightly behind the pink. Oh, he's going to play it behind the purple. Really nice. Good speed. Yeah, Ko Ping Chung is fantastic with the cue ball. We were talking about he's the current U.S. Open champ, but he did beat Feliciano in the Sharks Open and JJ you've been to the Philippines that would have been a stacked field over there can you imagine oh yeah plus just the amount of players as well I think it was some 250 ish and this is the part of the jump cue that uh, has really evolved immensely I think is the safety the control of the cue ball with the jump cue not only knocking balls in but really being able to do mostly what you want Hitting side spin, top English, bottom English. The jump cue's always been a, a, a topic between pool players, amateur pool players, online pool players as well, people who just want to throw their opinion out there. Where do you see the jump cue, JJ? You know, obviously I've not played as long as you. I was quite a late starter, so I've just always had this jump cue and, and, and rolled with it. Where, where do you think it's at? Do you think it's right? Do you think... Do you think you know, the well, size I think, of the jump cue. And, and, you know what I'm saying. I think it belongs in the game. That's for sure. I mean, I don't think – I think it has excitement, incredible shots. The talent that these guys display with it is not by accident. But, you know, maybe, you know, we could maybe take a little bit out of it, you know, a little of the jump cue out of the game, and, and that's hard to do. What, you mean like limit it, like so many per match? Maybe. Um, the only other really option besides that is – just being able to play it on your incoming shot, like if your opponent snookers snookers you instead of you snookering yourself to be able to escape with the jump cue. But I don't think we need to take it away from the game at all. Some would say otherwise, but you wouldn't believe back in the day we jumped it with a full cue. Uh, pretty amazing. Of course, we couldn't do some of the shots just because of the, the hardware that's done today. You can get over the balls that when they're relatively close, but but it's an exciting shot. You just have to think a little differently when you play safe these days. But I do like the idea of limiting. I think that brings drama into when you're going to use it. You don't want to come down to the end of the match and not have a jump left. Yeah, I think if I had to have a vote, I would vote that as opposed to, you know, if I hook myself, I can't use it. I just think to the average person watching we'd be doing a lot more explaining as opposed to have like a graph of three and they've used two no yeah i like that i like that being able to talk about that you know throughout anytime you have something that's kind of 
marked or kept score of or you only know, have so many kind of like an extension you know when when the tension gets high especially with the shot clock I think I think there's some uh, some value Zielinski takes the first with a jump safe let's just head over to table two because that was a close match Gorst he's on the hill 4-3 he's got this shot on the seven ball, if he gets good on the eight, it's going to be another point. Yeah, he was trying to look and see if he could hit a high ball and get to the top rail and run two rails. He's going to come close to this corner on the lower left, but should be okay. Pretty sporty shot there to control the pace. And one rack is, is big in these matches. If you remember the first rack of this match, Federer Gorse missed a long six ball, got pretty fortunate with just a couple balls on the table not to leave a shot, not really any shot at all. And you know, here we are, it's going to be a 5 3 win. So that one game in these races of five becomes so magnified. Federer Gorse keeps rolling. Yeah, Federer Gorse is now on five wins from his seven matches played. I think you got a gamble here trying to get him behind the three. You could just shave the one, try and really protect it behind the five and, and just let the cue ball roam, roam across. But you know he wants to get behind the three here. Getting behind the three, though, could certainly sell out. I like that better. Better just holding behind. Ooh, and did he cut off the top? Now, is the one playable with a high ball and speed off the seven? May ricochet. Yeah, I think. I think it's definitely playable. Yeah, I agree. Just got to make sure he doesn't hit the seven full, which I don't think he will looking at that angle, JJ. That gives you a miles better look. Yeah. Couldn't really think of the cue ball too, too much. It was going to kind of kiss off a couple balls, but. And this is also where I, I think he's he's becoming kind of sneaky solid on the safety side of things. Really don't see many mistakes from the young man. Percentage wise, execution wise, just keeps it real simple and that's a nice recipe for success. But this is the thing, right? Also, like immediately the jump cue comes out when they're snookered, you know. And I, you can't blame them, really. They're so good with it. But Yeah, and I think it's, it, it, I think they just think, well, I'm either going to pot it. If I don't pot it, I might get lucky or I might leave it. So two out of three are in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we may go the entire event. I think maybe once it's happened, but the entire event where they don't get over the ball. You know, like that just doesn't happen anymore. They may miss it, the cue ball, and curve it a little bit, not get the hit on the object ball. But getting over the ball, not a problem. And that's not just because the the, the jump cues and how good they are these days, but these guys work hard at it. Don't lose the cue ball a little bit. Great speed with the cue ball. Well, this is tough. Just the three sits to where hitting either side and run the cue ball not the best. You play just off the left side, trying to use the pink, just a containing shot. Oh, look how good this is. I think it's good. Oh, but that's a lot of control from distance, trying to really keep a hold of the three ball. It may have given a little bit of a look. Oh, maybe straight in. Now 
And I think he can't make it. He's trying to hold behind the seven. Don't let up on the swing. Oh, really nice. May give up a bit of a shot, but still pretty good. Did it ever help you to look from the other side, Carl, like he just did? It never made a difference to me. I tried it a couple times. I didn't see anything different, so I never really did it again. No, I never walked around. If anything, it made it worse if I went Yeah, it confused line. me a little bit, right? Looks like the three came enough for the cut shot in the side. Now, this is where the slick table may help you. You may be able to avoid the nine, two cushions between the eight and nine. Yeah, and this is the type of position where the Cole brothers, they really do excel. They're very good with the cue ball. Gonna check the cue ball off the second rail with a little left spin. Speed. And he really had to think about the route of the cue ball more there than the speed itself. Table two action is available on the Matchroom Multi Sport YouTube channel. Albin Ocean against Shane Van Bonin. They're playing the first rack right now. So that's just starting out. Albin Ocean is a winner of this event, so he knows how to get the job done. That goes in a little thick off the jaw. Yeah, coming two rails here. You got to make sure you're not coming close to the eight. You could bump it and not have a, not have a shot for the eight. Nicely around it, two rails. Have you ever seen him play this fast though? Since he's been at the POP, I've seen him pick up the pace, especially when the shot clock's involved. But I think this week he's played at an even faster pace as a whole. Yeah, I suppose that's a good point. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's the format. The well, I, format for the players. I think he's confident. I think that uh, that's a sign of picking up the pace. I think he's looking forward to a big year. Uh, you know, we talked about the Sharks and, of course, the U.S. Open that doesn't get any bigger than that. But he had a lot of great finishes last year as a whole. And the funny thing is, the year before, he was really struggling. You know, if you remember that World Cup a few years ago, his brother really carried him, I think, all the way to the semifinal. Yeah, I think the World Cup is a tournament they would love to win together as well. Misses the one ball in the side. Dry break. Twos it. Go ahead, Carl. Yeah, I was just going to say exactly what you was going to say. I'd noticed the twos landing in that little funny spot on a pool table. Just look where it finishes. and Six balls covering it, going up into the top corner as well. comes looks like he's gonna play behind the pink maybe. maybe we've got a little flick as well to open the two ball so got a lot done there 
Not sure if there's a jump combination or a kiss shot. So I guess it would have to be the combination. The cue ball kind of have a little speed going towards the purple five. Wasn't far away, but he'll take that one. And I think it'll be the jump cue and return from Zelensky. Don't really see much future of a shot. Maybe come across the right side of the one. Try and maybe double bank it and run the cue ball. I couldn't imagine anything else unless he just wants to take some pot luck and knock the one into the six. Okay, he did bank it around. Got a little action on the five. I don't think there's really a pocket here, so we'll see from Coping Chung. SVB takes the first rack over on table one. Is he shooting the combination here? I think so. So difficult. Not only did it have distance, five wasn't exactly close to the pocket. And he took a lot of time trying to really see what kind of safety options he had. And wasn't much there. That's got to go a little bit. Should be okay. You love it up higher a little bit more. That way the two rail kicks a little more difficult. And the cue ball's not going to come below this 3-7. And on the slick table, believe it or not, the two rail kick, if he catches it just right with the high ball, Little chance of scratching in the lower right. Never hard enough though. Really nice hit on the bottom part of the one. Good shot there, just getting the one ball back up towards the centre end of the table. For the first time, the Premier League, we've let some VIP fans in to watch, and it's been a better addition, hasn't it, JJ? It's felt a lot, a lot better, and I'm sure the players prefer it as well. Yeah, and those fans happy with the Shaw victory here to start day three. All right, trying to knock this in the face, probably knock the one off the seven, maybe run the cue ball. I've been on this one for a while. And you just kind of expect Coping Chung to know all the shots. A veteran at a young age still, but uh, Zelensky, that's the one that's so impressive. Just like the one ball safety he played a moment ago, he just just always on it it seems like playing the right percentage play and of course super talented when it comes to running the balls probably put some pace on this one come on one rail at the one ball he misses it one rail, could get it two rails from behind. Probably not with a high ball, though. Uh, slivered the one. I think it did open up to where maybe he can get the one off the two in the side. May have to roll it with a little spin. Don't know how 
how much of the one ball he really has. Oh, he's shooting this with speed. He's hitting downward. Two for one. A little over the four. Let's just keep this simple one rail. Just draw stuns out, stays above the five to get to the six. And kind of let it slide a little bit. Yeah, what the angle, didn't it? No, he might have to juice it up a little bit. Yeah, he played like a, a sort of stun draw shot just to create the angle, like a delayed drawback easy to watch Zielinski because you can see he just gets on with it doesn't he not much messing about while he's at the table no, he plays very confidently he kind of computes things quickly and calculation is not hard and I just feel like he just gets the most easy power out of the cue ball along with a lot of touch as well it's always been the tall guys it seems like through the years the the best players that just had the most simple swing. So Zelensky for a 2-1 lead. We'll be breaking the balls in the fourth. Yeah, both these players are in the top ten. Zelensky's in second. Cole Ping Chung's in ninth. But it's Zelensky who's leading this one. Shane Van Bonen is at the table and he's won the first two racks here on table two. He's playing Albin Ocean. SVB is third in the league table. Albin is sixth. So that's a big battle going on there. Back over to table one. Zielinski, 2-1 up. He just sits above SVB in the table in second. So the four players we're watching now are all in the top 10 currently. Top 10 advance after five days of play. We will lose the bottom six. Look at where Zelinski puts the cue ball for the break. He's the only player in the event who actually breaks with his hand on the rail like that. Yeah, he did the same in Boston, so he's not going to change after taking that down just last week. Same format. So I've talked about Zelensky a lot. I've always talked about him. Love his talent. I think a uh, great young man. But if you, ha you know, the same Moscone Cup team for Europe has won the last two years, same assembled five. And if you personally had to pick one to kind of break that that five up for this year, is there someone you would, I, that's the guy I would pick to, to maybe s sneak in there. I mean, there's Mario He always. He's always yeah, well, I was just looking right? at Mario right <laughs> through the cap there. That's the guy I was looking at in the distance. But, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, Zelinski, I think, you know, Poland have got a lot of good players, haven't they? And at some point, someone's got to get in the team, so why not Zelinski? And he's off to a good start, isn't he? Because he's picked up points in Boston. And I, I just kind of think he's kind of put himself above the other Polish players at the moment. Now, any kind of big win or run can get you enough points and certainly sway a captain's pick. But I think he's the one that has a real chance off points also. He's just so solid all the time. You know, before he used to always seem like put a, a run on you in every match, but then maybe get a little negative behind a bad roll or something else. Look at this. Going for the nine or the four with the cue ball. Well, maybe it's his year after all, JJ, because he's fluked the nine. Here's another look. Just look at where the nine ball is. Incredible. Yeah. 
It's incredible what can happen on a pool table. Yeah, ask Mario He. Oh my goodness, against it wasn't Zelensky. It was Tyler Sauer in that semifinal. Yeah, Skyler Woodward's warming up on the left, and then you've got the two Spaniards on the far side, and Mario's very close to the two Spanish boys to hang around. And that's the the guy we were talking about who is also trying to get in to the Moscone Cup for his first ever time. Coping, he walks into to Frey, and we're going to see a lot of these players later today. So stick around. This won't bother Coping Chunk, he's seen it all before. This is pool, this is the, you know, this is what can happen. This is why these players are at the top of the game because they can block these things out, they can adapt, they can reset and just keep going. Yeah, just like our opening game here, Coping Chung played many great safeties never really to escape with a shot kind of understands that's part of it and some days you run with a little luck on your side and then some days you got to try and overcome it big shot here to stay in the match so really nice confident stroke tricky one here though with the nine the nine's just really impeding the proper position on the pink four to hold for the five so definitely has some work here you always would like to say oh, I can just draw my ball back where it's at now but it's always touchy now the tables are very fast easy to draw the ball but also easy to overdraw the ball so again he'd like to take the secured shot from where the roughly the three's at now but does that really offer much to get on the five from the four so the nines really make causing some problems here, Carl, to make things easy. Yeah, these are the situations where I do love watching both Cobras. And I think that's because when I played, my cue ball was very erratic. I was more of a potter. That's probably due to the lack of practice, to be fair. But my cue ball was always a bit, it was very inconsistent. And these just, these just showed you exactly what he's all about because that's not easy to draw the cue ball. And he's landed perfect there. Yeah, and it's a real nervy shot. That's why it took him so long. It's like he's trying to avoid having to draw the cue ball perfectly in the position and just really couldn't figure another way and, and executed it perfectly. Come straight up between the 6-7 here. You're going to kill the ball around the 8. We got a little rub, so a little light of perfect, but should be okay. Well, what an out here faced at 3 1. Very difficult shot down the rail of the two. Perfect position play from the three to the four. And now trying to clean up to stay in this match. Coping Chung, the cue ball player, as I like to call him. Beautiful run out there. Three, two down over on table two. We've been keeping you posted. These two players have got a lot of history. They've both played in two uh, two world finals against each other, JJ. That's pretty strong, right? Yeah, absolutely. They split those two world finals. SVB getting his a little later than Alvin. Alvin's a two-time world nine ball champion. Yeah, and he's been in three finals. Oh, big shot there. Trailing 3-0 to get something started. Yeah, so these two men here have had many a big battle in many a big moment on a pool table. But so far it's SVB in this one. Shane, Shane looks like he's playing well and all this week. Obviously he's had a big week out in Vegas just a week or two ago. So he's clearly hitting a good ball. 
and he's coming here looking up for the the job at hand as well this might not end up too good will it keep going well it's tight i think it's makeable may have to offer a little bit of left spin but the svb i think is as good a spot as it he's been in a long time and he's never really out of stroke and i think he's still top three or four player in the world i just think he kind of wants to prove to the guys he may still be the top guy especially if he, he gets a little more confidence, you know, day in, day out. All right, going to have a little speed on the cue ball here. Not one you want to float. Ah, these, the pockets are getting tougher. And we saw a few misses from Zelensky last night in that, that first loss, right? We've got to imagine... Those first five wins, there were hardly any open misses. Albin's on the board. He converted that chance over there, so he now trails SVB 3-1. Copin Chung's just floating the cue ball off one rail into the area. It's, it's always one of the most difficult shots, that isn't it? Because... You always want to try and come off that second rail into the line of the shot, so it's easy to under hit it or over, but it's okay there. Yeah, a little bit of frustration there, but again, that's, that's the side of things I think he's improved on the most. You mentioned, of course, Ko Ping Chung losing two Hill Hill matches yesterday, I believe it was, and you know, he's just never giving up a fighter. He's got to get good on this seven later, though. The eight's pretty locked up with the nine. Playing for plenty of angle. Wants to get somewhat heavy on the seven. The eight does go to both the upper corners. Always nice to stay off the rail, too, when you're catching the second cushion. Maybe five, six inch bounce. Ah, he's going to be a little light. He's going to have to roll it. Little shake of the head. Kind of let up on the stroke a little bit on the way down there with the six. So. He can float it, but he may look into going into these balls now. Which direction do you feel like he's going to go? Into both at the same time or the into eight. the eight? Yeah. You know, he wanted a little more. You know, not so flush of a hit on the eight, but still okay. Most pool players in the uh, modern era wear a glove. The Cole brothers, they choose not to. Well, they're just a couple cool customers, right? I mean, carbon fiber are awesome. The carbon fiber is awesome. The cues they break with, everyone has the carbon fiber, but I couldn't imagine no glove. Well, he's tidied up. The current defending US Open champ He's playing Zelinski, the man in form. And it's 3-3. Three, three. Two tables in action at this year's Premier League pool. This has been played out of US One Billiards here in West Haven, Connecticut. Jason Shaw owns the pool room with his wife, Ara. SVB is at the table. He leads Albion Ocean 3-1. But this is our feature match. Between Ko Ping Chung, the man at the table, breaking, and Victor Zelinski. It's tied at 3-3.
I think a big part of Cole's success at the US Open, not just his break, but he did break very well, didn't he? You know, obviously his cue ball and his potter, it was all there, but he broke unbelievable, especially on that final day. Yeah, and he really never backed off. I loved it. Aggressive play by the greatest players. It's the best thing to watch in pool. Yeah, it was an incredible run as well. Yeah, it's, I think the right roll out here, pushing across. <coughs> Nine ball got right in the way if the look at the three. I like that option, though, what he's looking at. He can set up for the kick to make the three. I don't think the jump's the right one. I think, I think Zelensky's definitely going to shoot the jump. Now, you may t tie up the 6-7 doing so, which is pretty smart with the five ball somewhat near, though. But no way he's getting this back, right? No, at this level, you, you know you're going to hit one of the jaws, don't you? Even if you don't make it, so you've got to take it off. No, on Boston, I really never saw him miss a jump, I don't think. He's missed a few here. Pocket's a bit more snug than Boston. But I fancy his chances. Ooh, missed that by a long way, didn't he, JJ? Yes, he did, and I'm trying to see what Coping Chung has. The fans here early. Yeah, and they've got a fantastic seat. They're a little bit higher, so they're looking down on the table, very close to the table as well. Pretty nice control there, cutting off a lot of rails to kick at this three. I like the two rail kick kind of kind of light here. The six seven is still somewhat tied up. I think there's a lot of ways to get a snooker. Yeah, I like that speed. Too many good things that can happen, I think. I think that softer kick is overlooked so often as well, especially when balls are congested somewhat. And the biggest part about the softer kick at times, you, when the tick kick isn't easy, is you keep the accuracy on the hit. You yeah, know? you fancy hitting the ball, don't you? Right. You know, if you if it's an easy kick, I understand trying to create some luck. But when it's a difficult kick, I tell you, so many kicks are missed, and you never have a chance at that luck just because, you know, you kind of just hit at the ball hard and, 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 like, lost your line with the cue ball. Yeah, so people watching might think Victor was – little fortunate but because he played it at that pace he knows if he hits it he could keep Ko Ping Chung away from an easy shot and that's what happened. Cue ball needs to slow down a little bit. He's kind of got away. He's a tall young man though. He's Victor. He's got to be a good six foot hasn't he JJ? Yeah he's, he's as tall as I am so I think six two probably. Maybe still growing at the young age. <laughs> There's a few of them tall poles. I'll tell you the one that I think has a ton of game that, of course, he's a quiet guy, doesn't get talked about enough, is Daniel Masiel. I love his game, keeps it simple. Reminds me of this guy quite a bit. Yeah, I like Fachunski's game and all. Oh, yeah, that's a guy I talked about so much. It's, it seems like he might be one of the most just raw talented there is. All great guys, the Polish guys. Conrad, of course, seems like he's been around forever, only his early 30s, great player. I think I play short side here. Don't go into him. Just too good of a player to fall underneath this. and Not that hard of a shot to the upper left, especially. Well, now I don't know. May not be able to go for this, maybe a safety. Yeah, he's down quick, so he's playing the hook. Can't blame him that. Guaranteed the good cue ball. Yeah, he's letting his opponent back to the table, but you'd rather be sat where Zelinski is than holding the cue where Ko Ping Chung is on this one. 
This is another one that I don't think you have to kick 100 miles an hour. I mean, you're not going to hit it super light, but just imagine if you hit it in the face, you can put it on the side rail. If you cut it, you can run the cue ball. Yeah, I like that pace there. I think a lot of good things could happen. Didn't get there at the moment. SVB has found himself on the hill. He's leading Albin Ocean four racks to one. If you want to watch the end of that match, you can watch it on Multisport, Matchroom Multisport YouTube channel. We will flick over there from time to time here as well. Nice shot there from Zelensky. Had to kind of, kind of smoothly draw the ball two rails between the seven, nine. Another two rails here to get on the eight. Kind of let up on it a little bit there. That's why you saw almost the overcut on the seven. Spin kind of takes a little early. Yeah, and look where the cue ball ended up. Zelensky gets to the hill first, four to three. We'll be breaking the balls in the next. Let's look at SVB getting it done again and super motivated, but in more practice than anyone here so far. Is SVB, I have to think about the crowd. Is he the oldest player in the event? David Alcady, I think, wins oh, yeah, that title. Alcady, maybe. Just barely, though. Yeah, barely, yeah. I hate to say maybe Alcady showing the age here early. But, I mean, you know, just saying, no one spent more time on the practice table than Shane this week. And uh, it kind of shows in his game as well. Well, Jason Shaw was the first man on the table today. As soon as I walked in, he was there. All right, he hasn't made the one near as much. That kissed out, the one's gonna open up. SVB slots the nine home for a big win over Albion Ocean. So Shane moves to six wins out of seven. And that will take him to the top of the table for the moment. With a left-handed draw stroke here. First player to get six points as well. That be an SVB. What a treacherous shot for the one just inches from the hole and two down table. Not much angle. Can he cheat it and draw up the left side? I don't. I don't think so, Carl. Huh? It looks difficult to me. You'll have to take the range, JJ. I'm looking at the league table at the minute. It's so close. Jason Shaw's in tenth place on three points. Albin's just lost to Shane. He was in sixth before that match on four out of six so he's now four out of seven so it's very very tight yeah we'll flick the old uh, league table on the screen as we you know go through the rest of afternoon and evening sessions Especially now we're, we're getting really into the meaty part of the first five days of play between 16 players. We're going to lose six players after five days of play. So it's all about trying to get through to the top ten. The top ten advance, but the points carry over. So just keep winning. Simple, really. Nice effort there. Good speed on that, trying to keep the cue ball coming down towards the bottom cushion. Almost knocked the two in. Got to got to go for this here, I think. Got to draw the ball up the side rail to hold position for the three in the same pocket as this cross corner bank. Kind of bank that can turn on you a little bit. So you want to put a little right English because you have to hold the cue ball. You can't just cut it and let the cue ball run. Could have overthrow this bank. Oh, you hit it sweet. Yeah, very good control there. You could see how difficult it was because the cue ball still run on. 
but he can pop this. He's just going to get the cue ball round. Pink four next. That's on the right hand side of the table. Don't know if he can draw it out. Can he? Can he get into it? Maybe he can. Yeah, this is borderline really getting across. Yeah, and I think that was on his mind. Really, and he's given up the cut. I think this does go, and he goes kind of one rail at the six ish. Yeah, and you could mark that one down. That might be the worst shot you'll see from Ko Ping Chung this week. Complete deceleration. Missed the three ball by a long way. Man, talk about it all the time. The pros never really overhit the ball. When nerves are going, it's really the under hit. Kind of like the little quit at the cue ball. All right, little light stun. No reason to try and get too much out of it. The five's very open. Just take what you can. Now Zelensky set up to get, you know, kind of after making that for having that first loss, nice to get a W right back. Also, if you are Overhead. watching, in, sorry, JJ, I was just going to say, if you are watching and you want to check out the scores and the league table yourself as well, you can head over to WNTLiveScores.com. Everything's on there. May have to drop for the seven in the side here. He's going to try and really kill it. Pretty nice. A little bit of a missable ball on the seven. Anytime you're close, kind of the line on the ball can get a little distorted. I go ahead and pull this around the eight to feel a little better about, you know, the stroke itself, not shooting kind of in between. May dig on the cue ball here and go around the eight ball a couple rails. Oh, he's missed it. He's hit it thick. Wow. Giving Coping Chung a lifeline here. Okay, match number two on day three is going to be a one rack shootout. Yep, not happy. Should have really put the match to bed there. Yeah, this is the first rack over on table two between he and Ruiz. Two very good friends. Francisco is actually in sixth place. Four wins from six. Mario is three wins from six in eighth place. It hadn't been the best of breaks in this match for Ko Ping Chong. Not what we're used to seeing. To miss the one quite often. Didn't make other balls. Got the one down. Really nice connection there. Looks like the two may open up. Seven in a very difficult position near the point of a side pocket. I think the most difficult shot on the slick table, though, distance fairly full, a little bit of a cut, and you have to hit a high ball. I think it becomes a shot that's so missed. Now, if he's just rolling it, that's okay. But when you have to put speed, which I guess he's going to stay away from here. Real nice. Yeah, good shot, that. Looks like the four will pass in that same pocket as the three once the three's exited the table. Still a difficult seven ball. Kind of pretty good. The eight's very handy for later in the rack. If the eight's tucked away somewhere, that seven becomes even more treacherous. A 
Well, it's amazing when you don't shut the door how much life you, you kind of bring back into your opponent. Very confident stroke on the two and three here to open this Hill Hill, mat, Hill, Hill game. using a shot clock he's got about 20 seconds left you can't see it on your screen but there is a digital clock on both tables just so the players can keep glancing yeah here you want to try and get very full or make sure you play for the angle and he's going to get stuck in between a little bit didn't want to have to play the seven to the upper left that's for sure on the play from underneath. Gonna have to kind of kill this with a little English as well. Or can he just level out and hit a high ball? May just flick the seven with the purple five as it enters the side pocket. As easy as he hit that, the cue ball still overran a bit. Fought hard in this rack. Wasn't an easy rack. He had to play two or three great shots to give himself this chance to get to the eight ball. What a performance this has been here. Well, you probably, you know, undoubtedly got a little unlucky at some point yesterday to lose a couple Hill Hill matches and maybe a little fortune to get back to the table after a mistake from Zelensky. Nice icing on the cake to make a nice break and run to finish. What a performance from the current US Open champ there to beat Victor Zelinski. Five racks to four. Victor had a chance, didn't convert. And what a break and run there to seal the deal for Ko Pin Chung. Don't go away because coming up, Skylar Woodward against Win Antoine. 